ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another very exciting episode of The Rassing Show. Joining us today is a dear friend. PWI calls him one of the best wrestlers in the world today. Soon to be the longest reigning PCW Ultra Light Champion. He is the show stealer, the charismatic. Please welcome Jay Wydow. <laughs> Jay, welcome to the show. Such a pleasure having you here. Oh, it is such a pleasure to be here. And yes, that is right. That's me, J-A-I, J Vidal. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. That's right. PWI that's pointed it out. I'm the one to watch. Dare I say one of the best in the world. I was mentioned on the top 500. And hold on, hold on, hold on. As I shimmy over here and grab my PCW Ultralight yeah. Championship. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know you pro you made a promise to me the last time you were talking that the next time we talk we'd be having a conversation. You would still be the champion. You would still be carrying that gold, and here you are with that beautiful and uh, lovely championship right there in your possession. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you know what? Lucas Riley was an absolute monster in the ring. He was a threat, dare I say. But, no, you know, when, when we're talking about Jay Vidal, you're also talking about a top-tier competitor and somebody who is not looking to drop this title anytime soon. That's and right. that includes, again, <clears throat> my next opponent, Lindsay Dorado. That's right. That's right. And how many wrestlers are in this world? And how many of those make it to the top 500? Jay Wydell, just a few years into his into the industry, you know, has made it up there in the top of the world. And you're just getting started. You're just going to get better and better. I can't even imagine. Maybe the next time you'll be talking, you'll be in the top 100. I don't know. But you're skyrocketing right now. You're doing an incredible job. Of course, you you are the face of PCW Ultra. Maybe uh, soon to be the longest reigning PCW Ultra light champion ever. So, lots of great stuff, Jay. I'm very excited. And PCW Ultra, as we know, is, a, is an incredible promotion itself. We're, we're so lucky. We're talking here today because of PCW Ultra. And very unfortunately, we just came to know that uh, uh, we've lost a big part of the PCW Ultra family, Dan Masters. We unfortunately lost him just a couple of days ago in a car crash in El Salvador. Uh, Dan was always a big part of PCW Ultra. You know, in my little time that I've known the PCW Ultra family, I've always heard about Dan from everybody and uh, I've heard nothing but great things, you know, about him. So as somebody, you know, who knew Dan personally, who has worked alongside Dan, can you tell us something about Mr. Masters? Man, if there's something about Dan Masters is that he, he made me feel welcome in a locker room where I was completely new. I was a little intimidated because it was my first big major show um was pcw ultra like my first big you know like major crowd show um and he made me feel welcome backstage he went to the back he went out of his way to you know he wanted to make sure he got you know my name pronunciation right um any monikers i had and like a you know if we're talking about him as a professional, like he was as professional as professional gets, he knew how to make a match have a big fight feel, which not many ring announcers got that in them. It's just, you either got it or you don't. And Dan Masters had it. He would, you know, and even speaking above like professionalism, above who he was like in the ring, outside the ring, again, man, just a total sweetheart would always come with a smile in his face and, you know, nothing but good energy. And like it, I had nothing but great conversations with him. Um, I was very shaken up about um, just waking up to the news that he was gone. Cause it's, it's, you know, life, life can just be very unexpected at times. Um, this is Tommy. You really got to live life to the fullest and with nothing but love in your heart. And Dan Masters had nothing but love in his heart. And he was living his life to the fullest, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Very beautifully said. And, uh, you know, he. I'm pretty sure that Dan Masters' legacy will live on. You know, he's given us some very memorable moments in PCW Ultra history and also, you know, in the industry itself. And uh, we're, we're going to keep his memory alive. That's for sure. So, uh, Dan... You know, this this one's for Dan. Let's dedicate this uh, episode right here to Dan. Let's do that. Wow, Absolutely. love that. You know, they say that uh, it's the good people that make heaven heaven, and God needs good people, I guess. So, but he'll a be thousand missed. percent, a That's thousand right. percent. 
That's right. He will forever be missed. That's right, Jay. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, Jay Wydell. We were just talking about what a phenomenal, you know, few months you've had. I mean, we just touched base, you know, before your match against Lucas Riley. What an incredible match that was. And in that short span of time, you've accomplished so much, right? You've you've made it to the top 500, uh, you know, 342 days as of today as the PCW Ultra light champion. I mean, incredible. You are skyrocketing, doing incredible absolutely great and just like you showed us that beautiful gold that title the last time we talked you know you you mentioned how much you love that championship how you carry it around show it to all your friends you know that that was like sort of the honeymoon phase because you had recently won it now that it's been 342 days is the honeymoon phase over or do you love that gold just as much um you know i feel like when you meet the one you know you know that person is the one right like you you right. You always got your special side pieces that, you know, until you meet the one, you just kind of like keep away from your family. You don't show them, you know, you just kind of like see them on the side. But then when you meet the one, you present them to your family, you present them to your parents, you present them to your grandparents. Mm -hmm. I was very blessed to hold this title while holding my uh my two-year-old baby sister in my arms you know showing her like this is what her brother does and she could do this too you know you just got to keep chasing your dreams until you reach them because if you have dreams it's for a reason it's because they're attainable you know you talk about god or the universe you get those visions in your mind and you get them for a reason uh because they are attainable and this is one of those things that i envisioned in my mind uh that i believe I manifested in a sense. And do I plan on losing it anytime soon? Absolutely not. I still love it. I still show it off. I'll go, I'll take it to the gym. I, there's pictures of me in the gym with this title, with other people, with uh, wrestling fans at the gym. You know, it's just, it's this title. I said it before. I think I'll say it again. I don't think I'll lose it anytime soon. And I think I might just keep it until Jay Vidal decides to get signed and decides to maybe even, who knows, we might retire like they do jerseys and, you know, in NBA and, and the NFL, you know, like you might just retire it because who could hold the title after Jay Vidal? I've got a feeling, you know, the, the, the relationship that you have the, with that title, I've got a feeling that PCW Ultra might have to rename that to the PCW Widel title, right? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yes. Absolutely. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I, I think that's actually what's going to be happening. I've got a feeling. <laughs> I love that. And and you've you actually, it's not been easy. I mean, you definitely love that title. You've been carrying it everywhere, proudly representing you know, uh, you know yourself as a PCW Ultra light champion. But it's not been easy. You fought, you know, some very big matches. Lucas Riley, Jack Cartfield, of course, Matt. Who was your toughest challenge out of these three gentlemen you fought? Um, A thousand percent. I honestly got to say... Uh, with respect to the other to the other two, and it is the most deserved respect because I believe that Matt Vandergriff and Lucas Riley are top tier athletes that are on top of their game. I gotta say, Jack Cartwheel was my biggest um, competitor to date. Um, I never felt so close to losing the title as I did in my match against Jack Cartwheel. Like there were a lot of moments when it was just like this close, just this this close. Um, so I, without a doubt, it has to be Jack Cartwheel. And that's a match I actually want to have again, you know, sometime soon. If Jack Cartwheel's ever down to cartwheel his ass around back to PCW Ultra, you know, I might flip him one more time, hit him with another power bottom bomb, just for, you know, old time's sake. That's right. That's right. It's going to be a deja vu, but in a very bad way for Cartfield, if that happens. Yeah, look at look at how confident you are. I love the energy. I love the confidence, Jay. I love it. Now, you're going to be fighting defending the title against former WWE superstar, you know, a veteran in the ring, Lince Dorado, on October 21st at PCW Ultra, set in stone. Would you call this match the biggest match of her career thus far? A thousand percent. A thousand percent is the biggest match of my career. But you know what? It's also the biggest match of Lince Dorado's career because he's never been in there with somebody as hungry as Jay Vidal. He's proved what he has to prove, and I know he's out here performing at a, a level. And he's doing that, like, because it's just, you know, it comes second nature to him now. The thing is, 
Jay Vidal wants to show that he performs at an A level too. So he he better he better bring his A game because hmm. at the end of the day, yes, this is one of the biggest matches, if not the biggest match in my career to date. That's right. But this is also going to be the hardest match of Lince Dorado's career. As a matter of fact, he did a he did a podcast. I remember hearing about a buddy of mine showed me, and he said something along the lines of, um, you know, whenever guys are excited to face him, that they uh, kind of choke up or whatever the case might be. Jay Vidal does not choke up. Jay Vidal, when the lights are shining brightest, that's when Jay Vidal goes the hardest. That's when Jay Vidal wins and proves his critics wrong. And it's not me in Lince Dorado's ring. It's Lince Dorado in Jay Vidal's ring. That's right. If Lince is watching this right now, I'm sure he's sweating because, you know, he, he, he's got to be... Hot. That's right. Now he must realize, it must dawn upon him that he's going to be stepping inside Jay Wydell's ring. It's not going to be easy. It's it's Jay Wydell's fans. It's his house. It's his title. It's all odds against Lindsay. That's what's happening. I love that. That's right. Love it. Now, it is not just the biggest match, but also I feel like it's quite crucial, and there are multiple reasons for it. First, because you'll be defending that title on day 364 of your title reign, which means one day, one day away from it being a full year. Do you realize that Lince Dorado can take away one year of your hard work from you in just three seconds? One, two, and three. It's over. 364, that's where your championship reign could end. How does that make you feel, Jay? The thing is, I am keeping all of this in mind. I am going to training three to four days a week. I am training with the very best that because, you know, let's say Dorado was a Florida boy, right? Let's say Dorado once upon a time wrestled a lot in South Florida um, or the Florida scene in general. I'm actually training with a lot of people that let's say Dorado faced around that time. A lot of people that are giving me insight on how he performs, his strengths, and most importantly, his weaknesses. So that's what I'm focusing on. Not only that, but I am back to training over here with my mentor, my, you know, I call him, he's like my spirit father. He's, I feel like he was brought to me by the universe, Gangrel, the vampire warrior. And he's out here just giving me advice, telling me what I could do better, telling me how to perform and how to always win, which is the important thing. So um, I am not taking this lightly. I will say though, something that looks better than 364 is 365, which is exactly what's gonna happen after JAI beats Lince Dorado at PCW Ultra. And I say that not just with confidence, but I say that almost like I know it's gonna happen. Because when I put my mind to something, I do it. When I debuted at PCW Ultra, my debut match for the ultralight championship in the double shot duel, I had my mindset already. I said, I'm going in there and I'm winning. I trained day in and day out until that happened. When I defended my title against Jack Cartwheel, I made sure I studied his tape. I saw his weaknesses. I capitalized on those weaknesses and I defended my title. Lucas Riley, another one. Went in there, saw his strengths, saw his weaknesses, capitalized, defended my title. Lince Dorado is not going to be any different. Now, wow. I do know for a fact that he is the toughest competitor that I'm facing. He is world-renowned. He has been there, done that. But the thing is, JAI is on his way to being there and doing that as well. That's right. Jay, I love that. And, you know, we know that you're working a lot behind the scenes. You're, you're training with the, you know, undergoing the same training, training with the guys that he's trained with, uh, studying his matches. You're doing everything right. However, if Lindsay has something up his arsenal, some surprise, and he dominates you in the match, right? He's about to win. How far can you go to win? You know, let's say, let's say, you know, he's about to win. Would you go as far as pulling off his mask or, you know, doing something with his mask to leave him defense. That's literally, that's what I was about to go to. I'm willing to take <laughs> off his mask. Let me tell you something. So, so fun fact, right? Just a little fun fact, a little quick plug here, just to show you that Jay Vidal has been putting in the work. Yeah. 
I recently relocated to South Florida. My debut match in South Florida, just like in PCW, I won the Coastal Championship Wrestling <laughs> Cruiserweight Championship. Look at that. And I have a place where I hang that belt. Love that. I won in my debut match the PCW Ultralight Championship. I have a place where I hang that belt. Now, there is an extra place right there waiting for something else. And I might just rip off Lindsay's mask and place it right there, right next to both of my very, 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 beautiful belts as almost a trophy of look what Jay Bidell did. I mean, hey, when you go hunting, you take off the elk's horns, right? And you hang them up on your wall over your fireplace. I'm going to do that with Lince Dorado's mask. Wow. Wow. That is, I've got goosebumps right now. That, that I, you know what? I've always known Jay Wydell, the very nice guy, the very happy go lucky guy. But to, today when we're talking, I can see Jay Wydell, the guy who can do anything to defend his PCW Ultra Light Champion. I can see the fire in your eyes. I love that, Jay. I love that. Uh, So the PCW Ultra Obvious Light Championship obviously means a lot to you. Uh, How do you think you compare to the previous Light Champions, such as Swerve, such as Mr. 450? How do you compare to those? Wow. Um, So, fun fact, I actually talked to uh, Swerve when I went to Dallas. that 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 very you know very busy weekend um i was very blessed to be booked out there and i talked to swerve and he actually he looked at me and he said you know good job keeping the 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 value of the pcw ultralight championship alive um it is something that we who have held the title hold it with honor we we know what it represents we know the stars that it has made and the same way that he knows that it has helped make him a star, I know that it's helping make me a star. Um, I definitely feel like I can hang with guys like that. You know, I'm very confident, not just in my work, but in the company's um, confidence in me to carry that title, to hold it with a smile, to go on podcasts like these, to do stuff like this because this is what it's all about at the end of the day. And I I definitely just feel like if anything, Jay Vidal's name belongs up there with the previous ultralight championships. And I don't say that in a cocky way, if not in that humble, hey, you know, I've worked hard to get here. So here we are way. I love that. I love Jay. I absolutely agree with you. Maybe one day we, we need to see, you know, a, a, a union of the current and the past PCW Ultralight Champion, J.Y. Dell and Swerve Strickland. Maybe maybe a tag team match and PCW Ultra one day. That would be nice. Maybe even a one-on-one match. Who knows, you know? Jay, we know, you know, we, you spoke about this just a minute ago that uh, PCW Ultralight Champions, you know, that, that title makes people shine, makes them stars. And we know that PCW Ultra, you know, major promotions, they have their eyes on PCW Ultra. Hence the reason why most of the champions get signed by PCW Ultra champions, right? The most recent example being Killer Cross. He came to PCW Ultra and then Triple H picked him up. You know, then he made his uh, surprise return to on SmackDown. So that happened. So everybody's got their eyes on PCW Ultra champions. Uh, let's talk about J.Y. Dal now. You know, the options are open. You're very talented. Top 500. Where, wh- what's your vision at the moment? What are you thinking? You know, where do you want to go next? AEW, WWE? Is there anything else that you have in mind? Uh, what's the thought process at the moment? You know what? That's a great question. I honestly I honestly would, will take whatever whatever the universe sends my way. Yeah, I'm very open to that. I think that there is always a road that is almost already set by my inner self, right? Uh, they say, you know, God laughs when you make plans, right? Um, so I think as long as I keep following my goals, following my dreams, I am willing to go anywhere just to show that Jay Vidal is a top-tier competitor, and an absolute star, uh, whether that be Impact, AEW, or WWE, which, you know, of course, WWE is what you watch growing up since you were a kid. But now you also have AEW as well, who has like such a 
such a beautiful hardcore fan base and as well as impact wrestling who they've been nothing but good to me whenever i've uh worked for them uh, my options are very open right now jay vidal is very open to any option that comes to him and as far as what you said you're you're, you're a thousand percent right like when it comes down to it these major companies look at pcw ultra because pcw ultra is one of if not the top promotion dare i say in the united states you know like i dare you to look for another company that puts on the shows that pcw ultra puts on and as on top of that does it so consistently with uh, a hardcore fan base as pcw ultra has pcw ultra is the place to be not just in the west coast but in the united states period Absolutely. I love that. And I must say, Jay, you know, everybody's so proud of you. The fans are so proud of you. It, you know, uh, the promoters are so proud of you, I'm sure. I'm so proud of you. You know, just looking at your tremendous growth from the last time you spoke to this, you, you've you been doing incredible. And I can only imagine how proud must your trainer, Gangrel, be. You know, you have to be his brightest student ever, right? Um, you know, and this is like me speaking from the heart because Jay Vidal is very cocky. Jay Vidal is very, you know, let me tell you something. When you have, when you have to carry a title like that and you have people coming at you like dogs, because that is the meat. This right here is the meat and those dogs are hungry. You have to have an ego because if not, you will get eaten alive. And Jay Vidal has an ego to protect this and to protect his name, to protect himself. Um, but if we pull back that curtain and we pull back um, my sentimental value, Gangrel has done so much for me. And I am just so grateful to have him in my life. And I do, and it's not just me, it's anybody who's a student of his, which is what's crazy, is that we do we do what we do to represent not just ourselves as performers, but to represent him as a trainer. Um, we we hold him in such high regard and he's one of the people that we go out of our way to to truly to truly make proud like yes we do this for the kid in us yes we do this for ourselves but we also do it for him and for the school as well uh because we we hold him his training his caring so close to our heart so i i do genuinely hope that i'm making him proud i do believe i'm making him proud and i will continue to make gangrel proud I love that. And I can see how much you respect Gangrel just by the answer. It's beautiful, beautiful. And I've heard that you have actually started training at Gangrel School. You're actually training new students over there. That's incredible. Yeah. So uh, when, you know, I feel like whenever you get to a certain level, uh, trainers tend to trust you more. Uh, it was happening at Future Stars of Wrestling where I had um, Sin Bodhi, who's another trainer of mine. Actually, like, you know, whenever we need to teach something new to the students, he would use me as, hey, Jay, you know, uh, come over here real quick. And like, you know, let's let's or, you know, go work with him on this. Go teach him how to do this. And the same thing is happening at Gangrel's. And I think that that's the highest badge that you could hold, the highest badge that you could put, you know, to yourself is when a trainer, especially a trainer like Gangrel, you know, comes and uses you as an example. And he'll say, you guys want to see how to do this, you know, how to do this move? You know, Jay, come show them. Uh, he calls me Twilight because uh, he says I look like Jacob from Twilight. So that's been the nickname since day one that I started training with him in 2016. So he'll be like, hey, Twilight, you know, go show them how to do this. And <laughs> to me, that is the biggest badge of honor is to help. And when it clicks in their head, because I remember when it used to click in my head and how happy I would get, the smile that would come on my face of brightness. You see it with these new students. Um, you teach them something as simple as, you know, how to do a schoolboy properly. And once they do it, their faces light up and it clicks in their head and they start looking like professional wrestlers in there and they start feeling more confident in themselves as I did in myself. And, you know, you see yourself in them, especially with their hunger. And yeah, I'm just like, I, I wear that with a badge of honor. Absolutely. Love it. I know that Jay Vidal is cocky, but Jay Vidal has a very big heart. And, you know, I can tell that this lovely, beautiful. Now, when are you bringing Gangrel to PCW Ultra? You know what? That's a great, that's honestly a really great question. Um, I, you know, when PCW decides that they, they could, you know, 
turn off the the bright lights and hold a vampire. You know what I mean? When the sun goes yeah, yeah. down, the vampire right. comes out. <laughs> so as yeah. long as you keep the garlic away and you keep the sun down, I think PCW Ultra fans would go wild for the yes. Vampire Warrior game, bro, because he is an absolute legend, future Hall of Famer in his own right. So, yeah, I truly truly believe that uh gangrel would love the pcw crowd and the pcw ultra crowd would love gangrel 100 percent. and we know that set in stone will have quite a few luchadors on the show Puma king will be there it will be his first major american wrestling promotion appearance in years Linsa dorado as we know of course he's gonna be there as well as the ultimo dragon so i was wondering you know if the if these luchadors they decide to come together you know in the corner of Lindsay, if that happens if the three of them decide to turn against you do you have a backup plan ready maybe this is a good time to bring out gangrel now <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'll have I'll have some Bodie over there if anything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> one of my oh, trading yeah. partners, one of my trading partners, Matt Vandergrip, is gonna be there, which I'm very happy to see him back. He is um a true professional and top tier athlete in his own right and you know deserves an absolute world. Um but yeah, um I, I don't think I got a plan yet, but I am gonna have to start, you know coming right. up with one in case they all start to go together against me. Uh, you brought up a name that I actually went out of my way to study watching a lot, uh, watching his WCW matches, um, his cruiserweight WCW matches, which was uh, Ultimo Dragon. And wow, you know, like this is another beautiful thing about PCW Ultra is that you get to meet these legends that you grew up watching. You know, last time I met, um, uh, I've met before, uh, Ted DiBiase, I have met before, Booker T, and all of these come from, you know, the, the, the fact that we're very blessed that PCW Ultra brings in these legends to get recognized and to get, you know, the, the love that they deserve. Uh, and this time around, it's Ultimo Dragon, and I'm just in total shock. The kid in me wants to just come out and scream um i might you know i might be that guy to you know put on my beautiful high heels you know go with my nails paint and be like hey ultimo may i get a picture uh, <laughs> but it's love that. Yeah. very cool very very cool to have to have them around absolutely now if or should i say when you defeat Lindsay dorado at set in stone on october 21st who would you like to defend the title against in january you know, I'm just, I, I, I think I used the same answer last time and I will continue to use it until the day that somebody takes a PCW Ultralight Championship from my unconscious hands because that's the only way you'll be able to take it from me. Um, and it won't be with my shoulders on the ground, I'll let you know that much. <laughs> but I hold the challenge open for anybody that wants to come to me. It's not who I go to, it's who comes to me. Because at the end of the day, when you're on top of the throne, you're looking down at the peasants who are trying to make their way up. And Jay Vidal is on top of that throne. And I don't plan on dropping my crown anytime soon in my kingdom, which is PCW Ultra. And what I just said, dare I say, is set in stone. That's right. I love that. Wow. What a it's like this entire interview has been a series of promos by JY Dell. That's how good you are, Jay. Incredible. I've literally got goosebumps. There's so much to look forward to. You know, I've set in stone October 21st. Can't come here any sooner. So much to look forward to. There's also six blockbuster matches happening on the same night, apart from your match. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go over the card real quick. And let's predict the winners of the matches. Let's do that. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's start off with this one right here. We've got Shane Haste and Puma King one-on-one. -on -one. Who do you think is winning this match? You know, Puma King is an absolute beast. Uh, my money's on Shane Haste, though. Wow. I saw him okay. backstage last time around. The hunger's in his eyes. He's here to make a name for himself. Shane Hayes is the my prediction for this one. I love it. I love it. And I think this one, I I think you're going to be a little biased for this one because it is Danny versus Matt. Who do you got? Uh, Danny Limelight is absolute. Uh, like, I feel like gagging every time I see Danny Limelight. Uh, but, but I will say that he is a, a, you know, he's, you talk about opportunist. 
I know I kind of, you know, take a lot of opportunity, what opportunity is given, especially to defend my ultralight championship, because you got to do what you got to do. And Jay Bidell does what he has to do. But Danny Limelight is a snake in the grass, and you got to be careful for snakes because they are venomous and they bite. Um, but my money on this one is on my very good friend, you know, a top tier performer, Matt Vandergriff. I love it. Perfect. We got Casey Navarro, pretty promising name, versus Lucas Riley, the guy that you, lit you recently beat. Who's winning this match? Um, Casey Navarro is, like you said, he is a very, very promising name. But Lucas Riley, I shared the ring with him. He he attacks. He truly does attack. He is a ball of energy. And when you get a ball of energy like that, you got to wear that ball of energy out. I don't know if Casey Navarro will be able to wear that ball of energy out because usually Casey Navarro is that, you know, kind of ball of energy himself. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I got to go with Lucas Riley. You know, he's hungry. He didn't wow. eat last time because Jay Vidale. And, you know, when you're at the table with Jay Vidal, Jay Vidal eats first. Um, right. So I definitely think Lucas Riley has more to prove here. I love that. And this is a match that I'm looking forward to so eagerly. We've got Sumi Sakai and Viva Van. It's a big match. It's a big match. Yeah. I want to side with Viva Van. I want to side with her so much. Um Ah, this one, you know, I can't answer this one. I can't answer this one. This one is really hard. My, I can't, I can't choose. I truly can't choose because when it comes down to, you know, when it really comes down to it, you know, I, I will choose because when it really comes down to it as a champion, I know what it is like. And I will see, especially at Set in Stone, what it is like to, to face somebody who is a major name and who is coming into your territory, into your area to try to take your title. So I got to choose heart over, you know, like hard hitting. Um, I got to choose Viva Van, baby. Viva Van will defend that title. Love that. So the PCW originals, they're going to win. That's what's going to yes. be happening. I love yes, it. yes, <laughs> exactly. You know, that, 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 that's, that's who I choose because I think people like us, people like me, people like Viva Van, we are the cornerstone for that new era, for the current era, and for the era to come of PCW Ultra. Yes, you guys are set in stone. That's for sure. And then we've got Papa Esco and, of course, Toa Leone. Who's winning this one? Oh, man, you got Papa Esco and Toa Leona. <sighs> Papa Esco is a beast, but, baby, Toa Leona, <laughs> that is a monster. And uh, a beast cannot take down a monster. A monster <laughs> eats a beast. I oh, My man. money is on Toa Leona. Love it. Love it. All right. And now this match is interesting because this is the first ever Ultra Vault match for the, you know, Ultra Championship. We know it's going to be four people. It's going to be Hammerstone. There's going to be Sin Bodhi. You know Sin Bodhi very well, Chef. And there's going to be a fourth mystery entrant. We don't know who that is. So before you predict the winner of this match, let's let's see if you can predict who could the fourth mystery person be. I think... I think the fourth mystery person will truly be a mystery only because they won't be somebody, in my opinion, who is announced for the match. They won't be somebody, you know, who is uh, announced for the, for the, sh well, hmm. you know, I can't guess. I truly like, I want to, I want to say, I mean, who knows, right? What if Ultimo Dragon comes out and starts, yeah, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. kicking some ass that's set in stone, right? Um, I got to say, by the names on that list right there, of course, you know, I truly want to say Sin Bodhi because he's one of my trainers. Um, I know Hammerstone is, you know, you talk about, you know, Hammerstone is already doing that. Hammerstone yeah. is holding that title he has got a uh, you know a choke grip on that title i'm gonna say the mystery opponent i don't know who the mystery opponent is my money mm -hmm. is on the mystery opponent because nobody expects him therefore nobody could prepare for him therefore he has the advantage in the match i like that you know when i interviewed hammerstone just a few days ago i asked him which match are you looking forward to the most hammerstone you know what his answer was he said i'm looking forward to jy dal i'm looking forward to wow. his match yeah and wow. 
I want to ask you, would you like to fight Hammerstone for that PCW Ultra Championship one day? Absolutely. A thousand percent. Imagine that the PCW Ultralight Champion versus a PCW Heavyweight Champion. I mean, you know, like it's, 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 you know, I mean, clearly we're in two different weight divisions. It doesn't even have to be for the title. It could just be the money match in and of itself. That's Hammerstone right. versus Jay Vidal. Um, the thing, man, Hammerstone, like first and foremost, he's a locker room leader. He's a true locker room leader. He goes out of his way to be that guy. I've seen him backstage at shows giving speeches to hype up the the, 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 the wrestlers. Back to what I was saying, yes, I think Hammerstone versus Jay Vidal would be a money match in front of a PCW ultra crowd. Oh, hell yeah. That'd be amazing. I look forward to it, and I hope that it happens. I really hope so. And then we come down to the last, of course, the match that I'm looking forward to the most. The world champion is looking forward to the most. Everybody's looking forward to the most. We talk about this one right here. It is Lindsay versus Jay. I think we know who's winning, right, Jay? We know it. Baby, I said it one time, and I'll say it one more time. Jay Vidal does not plan on losing this title any time soon. So it's not Jay Vidal against Lindsay Dorado at PCW Ultra. It's Lindsay Dorado against J-A-I. So, yeah, absolutely, a thousand percent. My money is on myself like it always is. And that, as I said, and I'll say it one more time, is set in stone. Wow. Set in Stone happens on October 21st in Wilmington. If you're around that area, make sure you to get your tickets because it's going to be incredible. Jay is going to be there. Hammerstone is going to be there. Papa Esco, Sumi Sakai, Wheel Van, Lucas Lowry, Casey Navarro. It's going to be a big show. It's going to be a show that will be set in stone. Jay, I'm super thrilled, super excited. And I know that the next time you'll be chatting, you will still be, and maybe you will be the longest reigning PCW Ultra Light Champion ever. That. A right. thousand percent. I can't wait to talk to you again. And you know what? We predicted the last time and it came true. So I'm gonna predict it one more time. Longest reigning PCW Ultralight Champion. When I hit PCW Ultra on October 21st, 364 days. And after I win, 365 days, and That's so right. on and so forth as PCW Ultra Light Champion. That's right. Thank you so much, Jay. Pleasure talking to you. Cannot wait. Let's do it. Thank you.